This is a quick tutorial on how to set up the D&D Mini Injector in Tabletop Simulator. Make sure you are on the black color, otherwise the majority of options on the injector are unavailable. Dropping an object or mini onto the injector adds scripting to that mini with a lot of features I'll describe as we go through this. Flipping the panel over and dropping a mini onto it removes injection, and also removes any saved settings on that mini. Settings on the left side of the injector control injection. The top six are injected into the minis as defaults. The bottom three affect all minis on the table live. Measured movement controls whether the minis will spawn a distance measuring tool underneath them when picked up. This measurement uses the grid system and supports imperial and metric in both square and hex grids. The distance shown is the sum of all line segments. Alternate diagonal movement applies to square grids where every second diagonal traversed costs double. Player-controlled character toggles whether the mini will be considered a PC or an NPC. PC bars are always visible to everyone, including other players, and PC bar visibility can be controlled by the live options at the bottom. There's a global bar hiding option at the bottom, and an additional UI hiding option in the context menu, which will hide everything on the minis, including status effects. The defaults for starting health and additional bars can be configured here. The top bar is always used for health, and the other two have no special coding around them, so you can use them however you want. Ping init minis will cause minis to be pinged when their turn in initiative starts. This can be useful for locating a mini. Pressing refresh or roll while initiative is active will re-ping the current one. Disable this to remove the pings. By default, the injector only includes minis for initiative if they are in the center area of the table. This map area is the bounding zone. It's the same zone that One World uses. So if you have a mini in your GM area with initiative enabled, it won't be included until it's on the table. Disable this to make the injector include all minis with initiative enabled regardless of their positioning. Auto calibrate I'll describe later. Auto One World automatically initializes One World if it is on the table after the room loads. So you as the GM don't need to do it every time, just a convenience. Metric mode makes all measurements use metric units instead of imperial. In metric mode, a single square or hex is 1.5 units of distance. Whereas in imperial mode, a single square or hex is 5 units. Inject Everything injects every object in the room as a mini. This is a very niche feature, but it is nice for workshops that have just a bunch of minis and they are already at the right size. Show Mini UI just toggles visibility on all of the minis floating UI. You can use this for RP moments where the bars and status effects are not needed. This was the context option described earlier. Moving to the minis themselves, when a mini is injected, the UI may be inside of them or angled incorrectly. This is not something I can control fully as each mini can have a different local forward or collider size. There are quick edit options in the context menu to raise and rotate the UI. Click the center of the mini's bars to open the options menu. Menu options shown in red are enabled, white are disabled. Here you can get more fine adjustments on height and rotation of the UI. Clicking on any arrow on either the minis or the injector adjusts that value by one. Right clicking an arrow adjusts that value by 10. There is an override to the default for increment per mini at the bottom of the options menu. This override changes the value that left clicking an arrow uses. By default, it's one. On the right side are highlighting options. All of the player colors are available for highlighting. The toggle button at the bottom switches the current highlight color on or off. Measure Moves controls whether the mini will have measurements when picked up. Alternate Diagonals is the same as the injector option. If there is an injector on the table, this value cannot be changed on the minis. The injector value will always be used. I suggest always keeping the injector on the table, but these minis can technically operate without it present. That may change in future as optimizations are made. Metric mode is similar where if the injector is present, it controls that value. Stable mini controls whether the mini is stabilized when dropped. Some minis are inherently unstable or have bad colliders, or you're dealing with uneven terrain where minis will just topple when placed on it. This stops a mini from tilting when dropped. Bar edit buttons can be controlled in two places, either here in the options or on the bars themselves. Clicking on the right side of the bars will show or hide the edit buttons. 
They have the same feature where left clicks are 1 and right clicks are 10 in either direction. You can choose whether you allow the bars to go below 0 or above their max. This can be useful for things like temp HP. Any or all of the bars can be hidden. If you hide all of the bars, they are replaced by a small chevron to signify where the UI will be and to be able to open the options menu. Initiative Include controls whether the mini will be included in initiative rolls. Initiative Rolling controls whether the mini will roll their initiative value automatically using a d20 or whether someone needs to enter it manually. When this is disabled, if initiative is called and a mini requiring manual initiative hasn't entered their initiative yet, a message for it will be displayed in the notes. Initiative mod is used for automatic rolling and is the modifier used for that roll. This value is also used for breaking ties when sorting the initiative list. Tie breaks go by initiative, then initiative mod, then by mini name. Initiative value is for manual entry. If your players roll their initiative on D&D Beyond or similar, this is where they would enter their manually rolled initiative and you would have the initiative rolling disabled. I personally prefer automatic rolling for NPCs and monsters and manually rolling for players. In the context menu on minis, there are a few more options. Enabling hide from players will make the mini completely invisible to players other than the GM, even if you do not have a fog of war on the table. If you have a conglomerate mini, that is a mini composed of multiple different objects attached together, those objects will temporarily disappear when this is enabled and will return when it's disabled. Calibrate Scale locks a mini's size relative to the current grid size. When the grid grows or shrinks, the mini will also resize to match. There is also an option on the injector which can automatically calibrate minis when they are injected. A calibrated mini can still be resized manually after it's calibrated. It will return to the calibrated size when either the grid size changes, or it comes out of a bag, or if the reset scale button is pressed in the context menu. For automatic resizing to work in all scenarios, the injector must be present on the table at all times. Reload mini and debugging are debug options, usually ignored. Moving to initiative tracking, that is what the right side of the injector is designed for. Reset resets the initiative values of all minis in the room and disables the current initiative. Refresh is a staging step that the GM can use to make sure everything looks good before pushing it to the players. This is nice to make sure any minis you want to keep hidden for a moment aren't showing up in the initiative list before you roll it and those rolls become public. Notice when pressed the initiative displays here but not in the notes on the side. This list is private to the GM, the notes are visible to everyone. Player characters are shown with a red background, and NPCs are shown with a gray background. A mini's name is displayed at the top of each row, along with a descriptor of the mini's health. The health descriptions are explained on this tile nearby. You can change a mini's current health and max health with these fields. Entering a positive or negative number in here will adjust the current health by that amount. It will obey the minimum and maximum rules configured on the mini, so because we don't allow above max on this one, we can enter 999 and it will go up to full health. Left clicking the arrows will increase or decrease the health by 1. Right clicking the arrows will increase or decrease by 10. The top left number is their manual or rolled initiative, and their modifier is next to it. Minis showing as 100 are set up for manual entry and haven't entered their initiative yet. If you press the roll button in this state, the minis which have yet to enter their initiative and are required to enter it manually are displayed in the notes. This list is sorted by initiative value, then by initiative mod, and then by mini name. When entering initiative manually, an announcement is made that the change was done, and it shows the color of who made the change. In this case, the text is black because I am in GM mode. Once everyone has entered their initiative, click roll to push everything public and start the rounds. The notes display the current round at the top and all of the minis involved. The mini whose turn it is is highlighted on the injector, and in the notes it has an arrow on the left. NPC minis in this list are always white and are normal typeface. Player minis are bolded and are colored first by their highlight and then by their tinting. Notice Odd here has a green highlight, so they are green in initiative. Davin doesn't have a highlight, but has a yellow tint, so they are yellow. 
move forward and backward in initiative using the center arrow buttons, or optionally with the hotkeys available under options, game keys. You can assign each one of these keys to whatever key you want. The mini support a set of status effects for 5e. You can take one of these tokens and drop it on the mini to have that status effect be displayed above their head. Clicking the status effect once it's been added removes it. If you inject the base from Conditions and Ruler for D&D 5e, I'll put a link in the description, you can get access to more status effects. This is a flat base you can attach your minis to. Make sure when attaching it that you attach from the mini to the base and not the other way around. Then inject the base. Clicking the left side of the health bar after you use this asset bundle will show a large amount of status effects, and clicking them will make the effect orbit the minis. Multiple status effects stack on each other. Keep in mind, this is only available when you use this asset bundle. That's all I have for now. There are a lot of things planned for the injector in the future, including a complete UI revamp for initiative into a floating window so it stays wherever you're looking, regardless of whether you're actually looking at the injector or not, universal and custom status effects, support for round events, and a control panel for player characters. Depending on when you see this, those may already be added, as always limited by how much time I can put into this. This video is part of a series going through each tool in my d, &D Tools collection. Other finished ones will be linked in the description as they become available. I hope this is very helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.